my kids can be a little bit cheeky and sometimes they call their parents by their first names. It's really rude. I hope none of you guys ever do that to your parents. You never do, do you? You do that to your grandma? Oh, don't do that to your grandma. That's terrible. Okay, so I'm going to take out this Bob example. And sometimes my kids will call me or their dad by our first names. And I'm not going to use my first name because it has too many letters, but my husband's first name is Joe. No, it's spelled with three letters. It's not just J-O. Okay, although on Starbucks sometimes they, they spell it J-O, which on, honestly sometimes makes me question society. But anyway, we won't go there right now. Um, okay, so what I want you guys to do for now is just tell me, or not tell me, write down in your, let's just uh, take out this example, and I want to know how many ways are there to arrange the letters in the word Joe. Okay, write them all down. I've given you one of them. Write out all the other ones. You guys write them all out and then we'll figure out how many there are. All right, do we need some more time? No, we're good. How many did you guys get? Six, six? okay. I think I'm gonna get six too. Okay, so someone give me another arrangement. What else could I write down? Don't say it out, like it's gonna be an awkward name. Okay, well, how could I rearrange the letters? What's another one? E J O, okay. E J O, okay. What's another one? O J E. Okay. What's another one? G O, yeah. Okay. J E O. Then what's another one? O E J. Yeah. So I've got like two starting with J, two starting with O, and then that's how I work it out. And then I need another one starting with E, right? So I got one starting with E, and then I just switch the e -odge. There we go. That's pretty funny. Okay, so yeah, so there's just, there's six different arrangements. Now this shouldn't be surprising because if we were to treat this as a permutation question and we wanted to know how many ways can we arrange three letters, three spaces, how many options for the first space? Three times two times one, which is six. Okay, all right, well, most of the time, my children are more polite, and I'm just gonna take this out, and they call him dad. Okay, so now I want you to figure out how many different ways can you arrange the word dad.
All right. How many arrangements are you getting? Three. Three. Okay, so this is one of them. What's another one? Add. Add, yes. And what's the other one? Duh. Yeah, I don't know how you say that. D D A. Duh. Duh. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Yeah, so we don't have as many arrangements here. Why not? Yeah. Yeah, because the D's are indistinguishable, right? We can't tell one from the other. So really, the only thing that can sort of distinguish the arrangement is where the A goes, right? We could put the A second, first, or third. That's the only way that we can tell what's happening here, okay? Now, what's gonna happen whenever we have these repeated objects that are identical is that it's going to reduce the number of arrangements that we're going to make with the number of objects that we have because of the exact thing that we just saw here, right? Because some of their, them are indistinguishable, we're gonna get a reduction in arrangements, okay? And so what we need to do is get rid of the extra cases by basically dividing out the repetition, repetitions, okay? So we have to get rid of these cases that are the same by dividing out, out repetitions. Okay, now how many letters were identical here? Two, yeah. So this is like three times two times one, okay? So we had three letters to start with. And we divided it by two, but actually what we're dividing it by is two times one in general. If we were to generalize this, right? And the reason, I know that two times one is the same as two, but when we start to think about factorial notation, this is going to tell us the number of arrangements that we're going to have for this particular example. The number of arrangements, distinct arrangements that we can have when we have the letters in the word dad is three factorial over two factorial, okay? Where does the three come from in the numerator? Why do you think I have a three factorial in the numerator for this example of dad? Yeah. Yeah, because I have three letters to arrange. And then why am I dividing it by two factorial? Yeah. Two of the letters are the same, yeah. And if those letters were distinct, then that's the number of arrangements that I would get from two distinct letters, right? If they were different, the number of ways that you can arrange two different letters is two times one. So that's what we have to divide it out by. Okay, and we can generalize this. Okay, so if you have a certain number of objects where we have identical objects within that large set, we can basically, to figure out the number of permutations, take the total number n factorial in the numerator, and then divide out each repetition in the denominator. Okay, so as long as you can recognize, oh, here's a case where I have repeated objects, okay, this doesn't become a terribly difficult problem to solve, right? It's like, it's as I said uh, on Friday, it's a case of diagnosing the question. This is a case where I, I have repeated objects. This is the direction that I need to go to solve it. Okay? All right, so here's an example. How many ways can you arrange the letters in the word cheese? Okay, well, how many objects are we arranging? Six, uh, I gotta count, one, two, three, four, yeah, six. So in our numerator, we've gotta pick, put six factorial because that's the number of objects that we're arranging. Okay. 
How many identical objects are there? Three, yeah, there's three E's. So what I need to divide by is the number of ways that I would have been able to arrange those if they had been distinguishable. If those three E's had been different, I would have been able to arrange them in three times two times one different ways. That's what I have to divide out by, by three factorial. So this six refers to the six objects. The three refers to the three identical E's. Okay, now when you're trying to figure out what that's actually equal to, when you're getting really, really large factorials, you can absolutely do that on your calculator and you can do all of these on your calculator. You use the factorial button, but for smaller ones, um, you may actually just want to think to yourself, well, you know, for something like this, firstly, if it's written response, honestly, if you left it like that, I'd be fine with it. Okay, for a numeric response or multiple choice question, you'd obviously have to find out what the value is. Um, but when I'm doing these questions, I almost always figure them out kind of in my head or on a piece of paper because I just find it faster. And what I do is I always know that the factorials from three times two times one are gonna cancel. So if you can imagine what this looks like, it's gonna be six times five times four times three times two times one over three times two times one, right? So the ones from three down cancel. Does that make sense? The smaller factorials, I just find it's easier, or even if you're just trying to figure out what's three factorial, I find it's easier to just go three times two times one is six, rather than use the factorial button on your calculator, right? You can absolutely use it, but just do whatever you think is faster for you, okay? And then six times five, what's six times five? 30, 30 times four, 120. Okay, so we're, you know, of course, you've got options. I'm never going to say to you, I'm never going to take your calculators away and say you must use mental math, right? But I do like to kind of model some of the strategies that you can use to maybe increase your efficiency a little bit. Okay? All right, explain the number of ways to arrange the letters in the word cheese, or just, sorry, explain why the number of ways to arrange the letters in the word cheeses is seven factorial over three factorial times two factorial. Okay, so cheeses. Seven factorial over three factorial times two factorial. All right, so if we're explaining, we should probably say what each piece of this, come, where each piece of this comes from. Okay. Where does the seven factorial come from? Yeah, there's seven letters in cheeses. Seven letters to arrange. Okay, where does the three factorial come from? Yes, there's three identical E's. Okay, and the two factorial? The two identical S's. Yeah. Okay, questions with that? No, we're good? All right. Okay, so you guys try these two. And then we're going to pick it up a notch. Okay. So you guys are all getting the hang of this. I just want to show, like, and again, you don't have to do this, but it's just so much fun. So, no, wrong color. Okay. 
So this guy, you guys all had 8 factorial over 3 factorial, 2 factorial, 3 factorial. Yes? Okay. So this is just some of the fun stuff that you can do with this. 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 over 3 times 2 times 1 times 2 times 1 times 3 times 2 times 1. I just love canceling stuff. Okay, so these cancel, right? Okay, what's 3 times 2 times 1 equal to? 6. Boom, boom. Yes? Okay. 2 times 1 is 2, yes? What's 4 over 2? Two. 2. So cancel that, make that a 2. Now, instead of putting all those factorials into your calculator, because that can take some time, right? You just have to go 8 times 7 times 5 times 2. And many of you could do that in your head, because 5 times 2 is 10. Are we good with that? Okay, what's 8 times 7? 56. And if you can't do that in your head, plug it into your calculator. 56 times 10 is 560. For me, that's faster than going, and find, going to the math button on the, on the TIs, going over to that probability button, and doing it four times. And it's fun. You get to cancel stuff and cross stuff out all over the place. It's fun. Do it. Do it. OK. All right. Now we're going to talk about restrictions. What if we have repeated objects and we've got restrictions? OK. So for example, how many ways can you arrange the letters in Saskatoon if it must start with an S? OK. Well, if it's going to start with an S, what do we have to put first? S. Okay. So what do we have to take out of our mix? An S. Yes. Gone. Okay. So we just take that out. Take it out of the pile. Now all we need to do is figure out how many ways can we arrange the remaining letters? Okay, so it's kind of like we're, we're left with this many objects. We just take the letter that we want to start with out, and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight letters left. So the numerator is going to be eight factorial over of the remaining objects. Do we have any repetition? Do any of them repeat? Yeah, some of them are identical, right? So how many identical ones do we have? Or which ones are identical? And then how many of the identical ones do we have? We don't have identical S's anymore, right? Because we've taken one of the S's out. So now there's only one S remaining. But what do we have identical? Which letters are identical? Yeah, we've got two A's and we've got two O's. Okay, so we just take that out, the S is out, and what we have to figure out is how can we arrange the rest of it. Okay? Um, all right. So, I want you guys to now try these two yourself. Okay. So we're going to take, we're going to go on a slight tangent for a couple of minutes and review Pascal's triangle. Now, those of you that took 20 2 will have seen this before. I don't think those of you who came from 20-1 will have seen this before, but it, it won't take long. It's just a little pattern. Um, and this is something that a French mathematician came up with. Um, I don't speak French, so I'm not going to attempt to say his first name. But he uh, was active in, or he was alive during the 1600s in France. 
And he was, you know, in back even 400 years ago, most mathematicians were also sort of doubled as philosophers. And, you know, it's only kind of recently in the past few hundred years that math, the profession of a mathematician has been a thing. Because prior to that, um, you know, mathematics kind of emerged as a way of understanding the natural world. And so that's something that philosophers done, did. Right? So all of the people who contributed to mathematics, Archimedes, um, who am I, there's, you know, um, Galileo, like all of these different people, Pythagoras, they were all philosophers, right? And I'm just thinking of ancient Greek people right now, but it was up to about this time um, where people really started to make the distinction between philosopher and um, and mathematician, okay? So he came up with this triangle and he, he, most of his contributions were actually in probability and probability theory. Um, and he actually, uh, some of his um, theories are used today in, by actuaries. Does anyone know what an actuary is? No, I thought about being one once upon a time. And I thought I'd be really bored. But an actuary, it's a very interesting profession. And they, they actually um, figure out, um, basically, uh, they look at sort of risk management and decide, for example, things like um, life insurance premiums and things like that, right? How much should someone pay for life insurance if they have all of these different risk factors? They do a lot of things in in finance based on risk and things like that. It's a very actually fascinating area of mathematics, okay? But it's based, there's a lot of probability involved in there because you're always looking at odds and things like that, okay? So people who do that uh, use a lot of his work to this day, okay? Now, does anyone remember what his triangle looks like? And I'll give you a hint. Does anyone remember how it starts at the top? Do you remember? Start, what does it start with at the top? It starts with the one. And then the next line is one, one. Does anyone remember what the next line is? What do you think is going to go here? Take a wild guess, you guys. A one. a one, yes. And here? A one. A one. What do you think is going to go here? It's not a one. It's not a three, no. It's a two, yeah, so it comes from here. Yeah. Okay. What do you think is going to go here? A one. What do you think is going to go here? Not a four. A three, yes, because it comes from these guys. And what's going to go here? A three, because it comes from these guys. And here? A one, yeah. So, oh, I keep doing like diagonal, but basically along the diagonals, and these go on infinitely, are always ones. Okay, so as we go down this way, the next row is going to have a one and a one on the edges. Okay, and then what is this number going to be? Right in here. What's that going to be? A four, yeah. And this one? A six, and this one. What's this one going to be? Four. Okay, so I want you guys to do the next row. Squeeze it in if you don't have room. You can squeeze it in. Oh, 
Which one are you thinking of? Last unit. Oh, in 30 dash one? No. Um, oh. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, Pascal's triangle is much more fun than that. Oh, it's infinite. Yeah. All right, so one thing you like, well, I don't know. I shouldn't say you can't do this. I've never tried, but I don't know if I'd be able to. You have to kind of do it one row at a time. I don't know, I'm seeing some people like not fill out the middle part. And well, I shouldn't judge, Never mind. I wouldn't, I won't judge, but I would have a hard time with that. I have to go one row at a time, right? And I'm constantly like five. 10, 10, 5. And then I'm going to do the next one. And the only time I add is every time I add an extra row. I add ones over here. And then I can go uh, 1 and 5, right? 6, 5 and 10, 15. 10 and 10, 20. 5 and 10, 15. And 1 and 5, 6. And then I've got a 1 on the end. Okay? What do you notice about each row? It goes 1, 2, 1. 1, 3, 3, 1. 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. 1, 6, 15, 20, 15, 6, 1. What do you notice about that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so if you look along the diagonal here, it goes one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. That wasn't actually what I was thinking about, but yeah, there's lots of patterns in Pascal's triangle. I was thinking about the fact that it, the rows are palindromes. Do you guys remember what a palindrome is? Yeah, you can read it the same right to, or left to right, like race car. You remember race car? That's the classic one, race car. It's the same back to front. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna use Pascal's triangle. Has nobody ever seen race car before as a palindrome? Come on. It's, a, it's not a transformer that I know of. Okay. <laughs> but I'm not too knowledgeable about the transformer world, so. Okay, back over here, you guys. Thank you very much. Okay, so. Shh. Settle down. We can use Pascal's triangle to help us solve pathway problems, okay? And a pathway problem looks something like this. Julie's home is three blocks north and five blocks west of school. How many routes can Julie take from home to school if she always travels either south or east? Okay, so she's going from her house to her school. You might wanna do this, the Never eat shredded wheat. How many people did that? Or is that like from the 80s? I never you knew that? Okay, thank goodness. Okay. <laughs> okay. So. She can only, she's going from her house to school, but she can only travel... South 
like down, or east, which is right. Okay, so she can't basically go in the wrong direction, right? She can't go two blocks this way and then down one and then two blocks to the left, right? Right? She can't kind of do a zigzag. She's got to go in the direction of school, okay? So let's think about this. If she starts at her house, where could she go from her house? What options does she have to go to the first block? She could go east, so she could go here. So she's got, there's one, and how many routes can she take to get here, to this place? One. There's only one way to get there. How many routes are there to get to that place? One. There's only one way to get to that place. She's got to go directly down. Okay. What about if she wanted to end up right here at this intersection? How many ways could she get to that intersection? Two, because she could go east first and then south, or she could go south first and then east. So there's two ways to get there. Okay. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whoa, mind blown. Okay, let's say that instead she decided to go to this spot first. How many ways could she get there? She's got to go two blocks, but how many ways could she get there? Only one. She's got to go straight east. She can't go like down and then back up. So there's actually only one path that she can take. Even though she's traveling two blocks, there's only one path that she can take to get there. What if she wanted to go two blocks south first? How many paths can she take to get two blocks south? Only one. She's got to go directly down. What if she wanted to go three blocks south? How many paths can she take? One. So let me be clear. Yes, she has to go three blocks, but she's only got one way to go there. She can't go like to, um, east first and then south and then west, right? She's got to go directly south. So although she's going three blocks, there's only one path to get there. And that's going to be true everywhere sort of along the top and the left perimeter. There's always only one path to get to those spots because she's either got to go directly south or directly east. Because otherwise, she'd be going west or north, and she's not allowed to do that. OK, so now that we've got that down, well, let's say she wanted to go here. How many ways could she get there? She could get to this spot by coming from here or from coming from here. So there's one way through this spot and two ways from this spot. How many ways in total? Three. Okay, what about if she wants to get to this spot? How many ways? How many ways to get right here? What do you think? Four. She could get there by going directly south and then one block east. Or she could get here. There's three ways to get to this spot. And then she could go south. So there's a total of four ways to get to that spot. OK, so we filled out that column. Now let's move on to this one. How many ways to get to this intersection point? Three. She could get there from this intersection point or this intersection point. And there's one way to get here and two ways to get here. So there's three ways to get there. Okay. How many ways could she get to this intersection point? Where could she have come from? 
if she's coming from here. What blocks could she have come from? Could she have come from anywhere? What do you guys think? Could she have come from anywhere? Could she have come from here? No, because she can only go south and east, right? So she either had to come from above or she had to come from over here. So how many ways are there for her to get to here? Six. Okay. With an I. How many ways are there for her to get to here? Ten. Yeah, because she has to come from above or from the left. All right, we got that column. Now, how many ways are there for her to get to this intersection point? Four. Are you getting the idea? Yeah. So, so? Some of you are tired. Okay. How many ways to get to this point? 10. And this one? 20. Okay. How many ways to get to this point? 5. 15, 35. This one? 6, 21. 21 plus 35? 56 all together. Okay. So, you can solve these problems as a modified Pascal's triangle. That's one option. You can also solve these problems as a situation where you have identical objects. And this is why it is a situation where you have identical objects. Okay? Let's figure out where Julie has to travel, okay? How many blocks does she have to go in total to get to school? Eight blocks in total. Okay, let's figure out what types of blocks she's gotta go and what types of blocks, but what I mean by that is what directions is she going? Let's break these up, break these eight blocks up into directions. Can she just go eight blocks in any direction? No. She's got to go specific, yeah, a specific number in specific directions, right? Okay, well, tell me about that. How many and in which directions? Five east. Five east, yeah. At some point in this journey, she's got to take five blocks east. Does it matter what order she does those five blocks east in? No. And what else does she have to do? Three blocks south. Does the arrangement of the three blocks south and the five blocks east matter in any way? No. So, the blocks that she has to travel are east, 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 south, south, south. This is a case where we've got eight objects. Five of them are identical, and three of them are identical. So another way to solve this problem without having to draw out the path and use Pascal's triangle is to say, okay, well, how do we solve a problem where we've got identical objects? 
what do we do? How would you solve, if I asked you to solve, to tell me, how many ways could you arrange the letters E, 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 S, S, S? How would you do it? Eight factorial in the numerator, yep. Why eight factorial in the numerator? There's eight letters, yeah. And then what? Yep. Five factorial times three factorial. Yeah, we gotta divide out the repetitions, exactly. Yes, divide out the identical objects. There you go. Now, if you put this into your calculator, okay, I actually want you guys to go and calculate this one. So everyone take out your calculator or if you want to expand out the factorials and do that this way, I want you to see that these two are equivalent. Pythagoras came several hundred years later. Several thousand, or no, Pascal came several thousand years after. But they do both have triangles and they do both start with a P. Yeah, true. <laughs> okay. What did you guys get? Come on, everyone do it. You got 56? Eight times, yeah, so I, I always like to do it this way. Shh, do you get 56? Right, and then I know three times two times one, what is that? Six, so that cancels with that. Eight times seven? All right. Okay, so I want you guys to try this one. I'm gonna give you guys a couple minutes to do this one yourself. Um, and you can choose whatever method you want. Um, I do have to say though, you may wanna try both because here's what happens a lot or what I see a lot. People really like right after we go over this in class, they're like, oh, doing it with repeated objects is so fast, I'll do it that way. And then when an assessment comes around, that kind of pops out of your head and you forget that it's a case of repeated objects and you kind of rely on Pascal's triangle. So what you might wanna try doing is doing it both ways so that you can practice both ways, okay?